G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. Let's have a video measuring the hardness of space. Those of you who are familiar with my channel will be familiar with my habit of reading New Scientist magazine and occasionally reading an article to camera when I think that it needs to be shared. In this case, we've got a video that uh, I've been meaning to make for a while. If you look at the date there, we're talking 18 July as a new scientist. And I plan on using the article in the New Scientist magazine to bring you up to date on measuring the hardness of space. Because space is not just hard. Space is increasingly difficult, and apparently we are going backwards. If we look here at an article which begins on the bottom of page 24 and spills over onto the bottom of page 25, titled Space is Still Hard by Jeff Hecht. And Jeff Hecht is a consultant for New Scientist. Doesn't say what his qualifications are, but New Scientist won't publish anything from anybody unless they have a university degree. So here's what Jeff Hecht has to say. Decades after Apollo, why are we struggling to get to low Earth orbit? Humankind has made some giant leaps forward, but we still fall back now and again. The explosion of the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket soon after launch is a sobering reminder of the uneven progress of technology. Rocket science put humans on the moon in 1969 when NASA didn't have as much computer power as my six-year-old MacBook. Yet launches still fail with alarming frequency. Okay, we're away from 1960 when 13 of 29 US launches did not reach orbit, but with three major failures in the past eight months, we are far from the reliability sought for human space flight, which Falcon 9 is designed to provide now the US space shuttle has been retired. Why? Despite Apollo's success 45 years ago, are we still struggling to reach low Earth orbit? Astronaut Scott Kelly tweeted his answer after watching the Falcon 9 explosion from the International Space Station. Space is hard, unquote. No doubt about that. Launches are still risky because so much energy is needed to get into orbit, and the conventional options for changing that are limited. The Apollo era Saturn 5B weighed 590 tonnes and could lift a 21 tonne payload. The 506 tonne Falcon 9 can lift a 13 tonne payload. Efficiency has stalled. Well, I've got to call him on that. It's not just that efficiency has stalled, it's that effectiveness has stalled and it's worse than that. They're actually going backwards. If, if you look at how much rocket you have to build to get how much payload up to space, we've been going backwards for 46 years because 1969, 2015, 2015, minus 69. Yep, we're looking at 46 years of negative progress. We are actually going backwards. Here's a really simple comparison. We've got the takeoff weight, 590 tonnes versus 506 tonnes. We've got the payload, 21 tonnes versus 13 tonnes. In terms of effectiveness, 590 divided by 21 means 28 tonnes of rocket in order to get one tonne of payload into orbit. That was 46 years ago. Now, Elon Musk has other priorities. He wants his rocket to be able to go backwards like a pogo stick falling, 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 falling with things called grid fins sprouting from the front end of his first stage booster in order to aerodynamically keep the thing pointed with its rocket engine towards the ground. But because Elon Musk is not able to throttle his engines down below 60% power, and even at 60% power, one of his nine Falcon rocket motors is going to be making too much power for the empty weight of his first stage. So instead of being able to throttle his rocket back and descend under power, he has to fall backwards until he can give his rocket one and a half, maybe three seconds worth of 60% power 
and hope that in his suicide burn he can cancel all his velocities in three axes just as the landing gear of his rocket gets to be about an inch off the deck of his barge out at sea because everybody else knows that this is a bullshit idea and they don't want him to go crashing on land. Okay, <clears throat> so that's why there's a lot of extra weight on his rocket and that's why it doesn't actually lift as much as an Apollo. Apart from the fact that, you know, it has more engines, more plumbing, more complexity, more of bloody everything. Uh, 506 divided by 13 is 38.9 tonnes of rocket for every tonne of payload that Elon Musk can get up there. Now, if we take the 38.9 to 1 and deduct the 28 to 1 from it, we find that there is a 10.9 to 1 deficit. And that is 38.92857%, right? That is how much worse Elon Musk's best effort is compared to NASA in terms of payload effectiveness. If instead we have a look at raw efficiency, 21 tonnes of payload divided by 590 tonnes of rocket is 3.55932% efficient. Okay, 96.5% inefficient, 3.5% efficient. And how does Elon Musk stack up? 2.556916% efficient, which means that Elon Musk is a full minus 1.002404% efficient. And if you divide that, by the 3.55932% efficiency of Apollo Saturn 5B, you find that in raw efficiency terms, Elon Musk's rocket is minus 28.16279% efficient, right? 28.1% less efficient. If we look at the alleged progress, 46 years of progress has brought humanity Minus 1.186514 percent effect effectiveness per year. Right, we're going backwards 1.18 percent per year. The efficiency is only going back at uh, 0.612345 percent per year, and the average between the effectiveness and the efficiency. Well, that's going backwards at. Uh, 0.8969429% per year, right? I haven't made any of that up. All I've done is I've crunched these numbers that Jeff Hecht gave us here. Okay, <clears throat> now here's what he also has to say. We overestimated the success of Apollo. Rockets and human spaceflight have not followed the exponential improvement many technologies enjoy because of the limits imposed by propellants and that troublesome gravity. Now, this is where this Jeff Heck guy leaps out into fantasy land, in my opinion. So space is not just hard, it's also different. We make computers and electronics in huge volumes, so performance and costs scale tremendously. Not so for rockets. Tomorrow's rockets should be a bit more efficient than today's, so private astronauts may need less than $30 million they pay now. But to explore space in person, we need better ways to get there. That means looking seriously at alternative propulsion schemes and space elevators, rather than focusing on incremental progress. Okay, let's call him on a couple of those features. Private tourists are only getting up to the International Stinky Station where they have no ability to wash themselves, where there's 14 years worth of old farts and burps floating around being endlessly recycled by the air recyclers. $30 million for a private person to go up there. But you know what? Russia charges the excited states of Norte Americano to put a NASA astronaut up there? $83 million. $83 million. It's pretty close to $500,000 per pound of living astronaut delivered to the International Space Station. Another way of looking at it is a thousand, uh, yeah, $500,000 per pound, a million dollars per kilogram. 
That's pretty much the price that Comrade President Vladimir Putin has put on having American astronauts go up there under NASA's auspices. He will, as a loss leader, put them up there for less than half that price if they are a private person from anywhere else in the world other than NASA. That's called real politic, fellas. Um, as for space elevators, I have a great difficulty with the concept that just because you've got a space station orbiting at the geosynchronous position, therefore you are automatically going to be able to invent a material strong enough to stretch a cable from geosynchronous position all the way down to the surface of the Earth and an equal distance above the Earth so that the weight of the cable above the geosynchronous position compensates for the weight of the cable under it and then somehow magically the weight of the empty cars coming down to earth is presumed in the minds of these half-witted journalists who can't work a full function calculator the weight of the cars empty coming back down to the surface is supposed to magically generate enough energy in terms of gravitational offset to lift full cars loaded with astronauts and stuff to go into orbit up the other side of the same non-existent cable built of unobtainium. So I think Jeff Hecht, in calling for more work on a space elevator because rocketry is just, you know, really, really difficult and it hit its peak effectiveness 46 years ago and ever since then people keep trying to encumber their rockets with more strange, shiny, esoteric and useless features and therefore the rockets are becoming less effective. Just because you've hit the limits of rocketry doesn't mean that you're entitled to magically invent a space elevator. Any more than the fact that because fossil fuels are wrecking the atmosphere, therefore we're entitled to have free energy from permanent magnet flywheels or any other if something for nothing wouldn't it be nice if technology. Space is really, really hard because space is really, really hard because you have to engineer an entire biosphere and then try and live in it. And that's really expensive. Million dollars a kilogram type expensive. $500,000 per pound type expensive. And at the moment, as I explained, in terms of effectiveness, we've gone backwards by 38.9%. In terms of efficiency, we've only gone backwards by 28.16%. But humanity's ability to put people and stuff in space is actually regressing. We're not progressing, we are regressing. So you can forget all ideas of going to Mars and living there because the rockets we have today are worse than the ones we had 46 years ago. We've got no ability to lift the sort of payloads you need to even think about colonizing Mars. There's nobody who has the faintest clue of how to build a supersonic parachute big enough to slow a heavy enough spacecraft to land a living human on Mars. And there is currently no funding from any government anywhere in the world to try and address such a problem. What the Americans have got is a whole bunch of surplus, obsolete, reusable space shuttle engines, and they plan on building single-use disposable exhibitionary skyrockets out of those engines until they're all gone. And when they're all gone, so is NASA's heavy lift space program. Okay? Because space is not just hard, it isn't just difficult. Space is like a fossil fueled internal combustion automobile fire chariot. It's a really, really, really bad idea. And it's been done very well. But it's still not actually a good thing to do. Sorry about that. Robert Heinlein was wrong. Arthur C. Clarke was wrong. Isaac Asimov was wrong. Humanity is not going to colonize 
the solar system in the same way that England colonized Botany Bay. There's more to it than that. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.